Hello. Um, in this video, I will talk about some special tips to train Pong. Okay. Um, I will talk about two level here. First one is the Pong when we train in the form. When we, uh, we will talk, I, I, I will talk about Pong arm. Okay. So I will talk about the shape here and how to apply the force in. Uh, yes, yeah, some special tip, and I will talk about the perm inside the body as well. Um, when we talk about perm, okay, basically we need two quality here. Okay, first is the surface of perm because people touch you, they touch the surface of perm. It's like the balloon. Okay, they touch the surface of perm. Second is the empty space inside. The pump, okay? It's like the balloon again. You have the surface and you need the empty space inside that contain, uh, contain the pressure inside. This is very important. If you, if you train pump and only think about your arm and relaxation, but without the quality of expanding, extending the, the surface, you cannot feel the empty space. Maybe yes. Maybe you can, I mean, maybe you can have the empty space if you train in a high level, you can do like this. But um, basically, if you start to train Tai Chi, I recommend you to do Pong big, as it should be, okay? Um, if you look at Yang Cheng Fu posture, yes, Pong is big, okay? Don't start with this. Many people start Pong with this and when they touch, they say this is Pong and when the partner apply some force, actually they don't use pung, they change to something else and then they say, okay, see, this is a technique. But come on, there's no pung there and what you use is not pung, okay? So in this case, I will talk about pung quality here. Again, when we touch, okay, this is pung. When we do the form, here is the same, okay, the same as when we do the form. When I move him, I cannot push my palm forward or just expand my arm forward. That is not the right way. Because when I do that, it's easier for him to feel my force and he can, he can borrow my force and use my force because I give too much force. But again, if I have no palm inside my arm, it's dangerous too because the opponent will feel that he can hit my face. Because he feel that I have no pung here. The right, the correct pung is you touch light, but full feel with uh, emptiness inside, and he cannot feel any force from your arm, or maybe some force, but not the force that he can borrow or can use. Because this force is not pushed forward, okay? And at the same time, you still have to stretch and open the, the surface of pung to protect yourself. So your opponent can, cannot feel that he can hit you. Okay? If you do like this, he, he feel that he can hit you. He can, he can come across or pass your pung and hit you. You use this, he can borrow your force. Okay? So remember that. So what we have to do is touch. Let his force stuck at the surface. But you don't apply your force to the contact point. You don't need to do that. When you stretch your pung, open all around here, not the contact point, not push the contact point forward, not put, not push the whole pung forward, or use your body to push your pung forward. Don't do that. You touch, let him stuck at your pung. At the same time, the, 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 the main important point, the, the most import, important point, in this pung arm is here. You have to let this empty and pull back. So it will stretch your pung here, create the, the surface. But at the same time, it's create more empty space. Okay? I know we can create empty space by pushing out forward. But that is not pung because the direction go in one, one way, one direction. Peng is about Si Mian Pa Fang or all direction. When you open stretch this, you have to open your body at the same time. Pull yourself backward. So you stretch this and now 
it's easier for me to move him. Again, you resist. Okay, if, um, if he resists, and then I, I use my force. Whatever you use, okay, your waist, your hua, or whatever. But when you use your force, you use lee, you use your force, you use force. So, you don't have to do that. Your waist and hua should be passive, at least here, okay. You stick to him with pump, expand the surface, but at the same time, you pull this backward. Your body will want to turn, but not because you turn, um, you want to turn because you want to push him out. You turn because you want to stretch here. When you do that, the quality change is easier for me to move him. Okay. So again, I use my force to push him like this. He feel my force. It's easier for him to, to resist or even borrow my force. I touch him, I create empty space, I pull myself back, I have more space now. I turn and create that stretching and move him out. Okay, that is the correct way. Again, if he try to resist and he still can, but, but he has to change. Okay, however, I can change as well, right? Actually, I can step, I can move. But when we train, okay, we train with the quality, uh, quality that we need in training. So he has his structure done. I move with normal force, I cannot move him. But then I pull this and can move him. So when you train the form, okay, when you train the form here, see, don't push it like this, okay? Don't, don't turn your body and let your your body hit to your shoulder like that. No, pull your body out from your shoulder. You turn your body, but you pull your body out from your shoulder. Create stretching, and then create pump, okay? So you can try this. Let your ishi open. Let pump go forward, but at the same time, when you, when you turn your body and sink forward, you pull this part, you feel stretching your force will, will change. Okay, this is for the Peng arm. But another level, okay. Yeah, the master, the old master always said, in your body, every part of your body, okay, no one single part that has no Peng, okay, which means Everywhere of your body need to have pump. But how about if you try to use pump by pushing out? He can feel your force and it's easy, really easy for him to, to push you because now it's like uh, the, the, the metal ball or something like that is tight and it's uh, uh, stiff. Okay. So what I have to do is I still open, expand, but at the same time, for example, I pull my spine backward, create empty space, okay? He falls stuck at the surface, and it's easy for me to hua. So to hua the opponent, for example, he pushed me with force. I try to hua by external movement. I cannot move him. No one will, will move with you like this, okay? I open pong, I pull my spine backward, Create empty space inside, his force stuck at the surface. Okay, I turn, I hua. Then I can hua him. Same as here, I use external movement to move him, cannot. I pull this, create pong. Now I can move him. So he push with two hands, the same. I open pong, but not this, and move, see? Cannot. I open and stretch the surface. Yes, correct. I pull my Mingmen back. Okay. As a grandmaster Wang, uh, Wang Peisheng said, to create Peng, you think about your Mingmen. Yes, you can do that. Think about your Mingmen, pull your Mingmen back, pull your spine backward, create empty space. That's good. Then Hua. Why we can Hua like this? Because his four are stuck at the surface, and he cannot control his balance. 
if your body be stick like this, and when you, he can control his balance. Yeah, he not stuck with your chin, okay, with your pong. But when I apply pong, his fall stuck at the surface of pong. And when I chin, he will all balance because he feel only emptiness. So pong is like this, okay? So when you train pong, remember, don't push forward. Don't apply pong by this. Pull here, okay? And go, okay? So pong is all direction force, okay? It's passive, okay? You don't use pong to hit people, okay? Or push people. Pung is pung. It's open, it's be passive, it can rebound because it's full of elastic. But but again, it's, it's not the purpose of pung to hit anybody, okay? Or try to push anybody. So yeah, this is um, the course on pung for, for this level. Um, see you in the next video. Thank you.